Hey everyone, uh, today I'm doing a, a PGM uh, introduction to basic troubleshooting. So for people who are new to the PGM, who have maybe just bought one, uh, got it home, plugged it in and it's not working quite right, or their games have got distortion, or basically, yeah, basically it's not, it's not working as it should. Um, so I just wanted to run through some basic troubleshooting. Uh, a lot of this troubleshooting does apply to JAMA boards in general, um, so some of it is not absolutely um, for the PGM only. Right, now the first thing is the cartridge slots. The cartridge slots are a real pain, um, depending on whether you have a single wipe or a dual wipe connector. Now, these are examples of both. This one, I'm not sure if it's going to... There we go. You can see how each pin has two little... Um, connectors on it, two little pins that, that actually um, connect to the actual cart PCB. Um, so they're, they're called wipes and that's a, a dual wipe. These are the ones to have. Um, these make the cart slot a lot more reliable. So that's a dual. Now these I can sell. If I've got some in stock, if I've got spares, I can sell them. It's a no solder upgrade. You just have to take your PGM apart. Uh, plug the old board out, plug this in, and then that's it. So it's a, a very easy upgrade. I try to supply all the pre-made PGMs that are pre-modded that I sell uh, with the dual white, which is which is one of is, is one of these. So that's dual. Now to see single. Now see how there's just one wipe. There's no dual. It's fairly fairly easy to see. Um, hopefully the camera's doing a good enough job on it. Um, so yeah, so these are the ones that are, are problematic. Um, they still work, but you may have to put the card in a couple of times just to get the angle just right so they work. So that's the that's the cartridge slot. Now you can clean it. Um, I've seen um, uh, cleaning devices for for using in, in slots. You can actually manually clean them. Um, I have been able to. Some people they just grab a um, cotton bud which depending on where you're from will be a different uh, different name oh, just let me get my tools out here is this is a pair of pliers and just grabbing the um, the cotton bud and just squishing it with the pliers putting some uh, isopropanol on it, IPA uh, alcohol and then because you've just squashed it so it's actually squashed you can actually push that into the cart very gently and go along and actually clean the actual um, socket on the actual motherboard itself. So that's all doable as well. Uh, cleaning carts is, is very similar, so just grab your cart, uh, grab some IPA alcohol, some cotton buds. Uh, I think they're also called cotton tips in America. Um, I think uh, there's always different names for stuff. So just put some alcohol on it, which I've got my little dispenser off here, which you can't see. And then get onto the, the actual cart itself, the PCB and just clean it along like there. Don't push too hard, just enough, and if it's dirty, I'm not sure if I've cleaned this one, yeah, I've cleaned this one, so it's not, but basically that should come out like black or grey, and then just keep cleaning it until the cotton buds come off and they're clear. That means that the carts are done, so you need to do all the tops, flip the cartridge around obviously, and then do it all again, that way you do uh, both the top and bottom of all the carts. So that's cleaning a cart, guys. Normally, normally the carts that I would sell, I've already pre-cleaned, uh, but sometimes a few get away from me, um, so that does actually happen. So that's an important thing to do, is to clean the cart. Once you've cleaned the cart, um, getting the upgrade to the dual uh, wipe, or if you've already got dual wipe, that will solve nearly, probably 50 to 60% of boot up errors, and you'll see it, the screen will go all crazy, the graphics will be distorted, and you just unplug it, plug it in again, um, and you know, she should be all good to go. So that's that's the cart connectors. Um, for the five volt rail, um, if it's a little bit too low, um, the boards will also complain. Uh, and they won't run properly, they might reset every now and then, or glitch, or come up with a, a lock-up screen that actually shows a whole heap of code all over the screen. Now, the PGMs like to run around 5, 5.05 volts. Um, now, the best way to measure this is to grab your board. Now, what you want to do, grab a multimeter. It doesn't have to be a high-spec one, as long as it's got voltage on it. So, go voltage DC, 
So it's this one, this is my Fluke uh, 75. I've had this one for a, um, for a very long time, so you can just choose which one you want. And then it goes into DC volts. Now I'm not sure if this is going to record well. Basically what you want to do is you want to plug the Jama finger in here, power the board up, and then you want to probe these two pins here. So you've got here is ground, and here is plus five. So what you want to do is once it's plugged in, you want to get your multimeter leads and just hold them in there like that, and then it'll tell you what the voltage is. Now, I'm going to see... My test loom is not very long, so I may not be able to plug the board in. No, this isn't... I don't think this is going to work. No, this is not going to work. Unplug it. Right, okay, let's get organized here. No, that's not gonna cap that's not gonna get I can't get on the camera because there's too much to the lead. My Jama test harness isn't very long, but basically what you want to do, you wanna put this on DC volts, plug it into the Jama connector, and then yeah, probe the two points. So you'll have ground here is these two, and then plus five is, is these two here. And that's how you want it. And you should come up with about five volts. Uh, 5.00 or 5.01, 5.05, something like that. Um, if you don't have that, then you need to adjust your power supply. Uh, my power supply here and most arcade ones have a little, just in there, that's just a pot that you can turn and that adjusts your five volts. So that's what you need to do. Because otherwise, yeah, the boards will do strange stuff. Uh, and that can be because the 5 volt rail is too low. Um, they are very finicky about that. I've had a lot of people and they've gone, oh no, it's not working. And I'm like, have you checked your 5 volt? And they're like, no. And I'm like, check that. And they're like, oh, it's only 4.8. And I'm like, well, there you go. That's what's going to, that's what's going to cause your problems. Um, now on the actual board itself, uh, this little button here, this is your test switch. So this takes you into, does the same thing as the JAMA test switch. If you had it wired up via here. Um, so just press that and that'll take you into the menu. Uh, you can run tests on the RAM, uh, RGB, uh, the CRT, any, any sort of test that you need to run. That's the guy to press. Let the cart boot first. Um, if you don't have a cart in there, it automatically boots to the test menu. Um, so you can just plug it into your, and you don't even need a game to get into the test menu. And that'll allow you to run some tests to help you, uh, you know, adjust your geometry if you're using a CRT. Uh, etc etc so that's that's the test switch uh, my reset switch on this little guy is a little toggle switch just here this board doesn't have one this is one of my older boards that I repaired and it was just covered in corrosion so I took it off the board and hardwired it uh, so that's the reset switch sometimes you have to click that uh, for some games to work but it's it's not very common most of the time you'll never have to do that now with your dip switch settings there's only one that you need to do and that's for free play and that's number four now, I'm not sure if it's going to give a good picture there. So, yeah, just number four is the only one you need to have down. The rest all stay up. Now, not a lot of games uh, record their high scores list, um, even though the board does have backup RAM. Um, not all do. Now, if they some of the cave ones, I think if you turn eight on, they'll save their uh, settings. I think it's some of the caves, and it could be... B-Storm as well. Um, there's only a few. There's only like two or three that actually do it. So that's what number eight does. Now, this is defined in the uh, PGM manual that you can download off my webpage. Uh, so don't worry about not remembering, but that's all you need. You just need four and that's and then it'll go in free play. You won't need to press the coin button and then it'll run fine. So that's that. Uh, and obviously over here is your volume. So that's to adjust your volume, uh, which I've talked about. So that's basically it guys, that's basic troubleshooting for the PGM. If you're having problems and you want to check anything, uh, send me a message, send me an email, um, join the Discord channel and you can come on, have a look at my brand new website, which is going really, really well, uh, or, or just you know send me a message via Twitter, whatever. Um, I can always help you out, just let me know, and um, yeah. Anyway guys, happy PGMing.